So if you go back to the New Testament with fresh eyes, it can be a very wild experience. Uh, it definitely was for me. And I think that, you know, there is a question that presents itself when you read this material. And that is the question of whether or not Jesus is who he says he is. And, you know, it's, if, if, it's a question that people need to take seriously and that I felt in my own life that I needed to take seriously because on the one hand, um, Christ is saying some pretty radical things and, um, you know, that can be very attractive, especially if you're a young person. Uh, the, the radical is always more attractive to the young. Uh, and it certainly was for me, I thought his message was pretty radical in terms of what he was asking of people. And of course, I also noticed that not very many Christians were <laughs> living in the way that Christ seemed to teach that they ought to live. Um, but on the other hand, Christ is saying things like he's not just saying that you should, um, you know, that you should help the poor and that you should lift up the humble and that you shouldn't be proud and things like this. But he's also saying that he's the son of man. <laughs> and, um, that, you know, he's the ruler of his own kingdom and that he's the son of God and stuff like this, you know, where he starts to sound like a, like a cult leader if he's just, you know, if he's just a philosopher or a sage, then it looks like he's kind of teetered off the edges into a, a, a really kind of dark cult figure. And so I don't take seriously um, this idea that you can just admire Jesus for his teachings because amongst his teachings are views about himself and who he is, right? That you would need to take seriously in order to take seriously the moral message, um, which was incredibly radical, uh, which was and is incredibly radical and demanding. And uh, yeah, so for me, that is a question that presents itself. Now, can you believe it? Well, that's that's a matter of faith and and I you know I mean I, I think that faith in some sense is a gift but faith is a gift that's often born of difficult questions I mean that's how it was for my life so I think that that's a question that people need to struggle with and for me uh, one way of struggling with that was to look at the people who devoted their lives to really following Christ you know and when you look at the lives of the saints I think it's pretty hard to come away from that and think that they're just following a cult leader. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, so I think we have to look at those who have lived that vision in a faithful way. And living that vision in a faithful way, of course, includes believing that Christ is who he says he is. I did not think I was joining a cult in part because I had done a lot of philosophy and theology before coming to the Bible with fresh eyes. And so I had a sense that there was a, an intellectual gravitas behind at least classical theism as I understood it. Um, and of course, by that time, I had also read a lot about the history of the church. Um, and I think you can read that history and come away with a lot of beliefs, but I don't think that the historical Catholic church presents itself as a, as a mere cult. <laughs> doesn't give off David Koresh sort of vibes.